Emphysema Jason here to tell you which 10 quarterbacks to draft. There are 10 great quarterbacks this year, and the rest are trash in my opinion. We're going to break it down from 10 to 1, and we have some cool breaking news. Check it out. Hey, this is Patrick Mahomes, quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The fantasy footballers. That's us. I'm one of them. That's me and you, Jay. That's me and you, baby. No, Mike. We got a bear. Big cardboard bear in his place. We got better, the deucers. Better looking than Mike, but better work. looking than the deucers. And the, yeah, worse input generally. Yeah, generally. 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 Sometimes. Uh, yeah, the deucers are in the building. I don't think we've ever replaced them with a piece of cardboard. Have we not thrown Jay Grizz back there? I think we have. Oh, yeah. we have? Yeah. Oh. So I, you... didn't, I didn't notice. <laughs> um, welcome in. It's Tuesday, April 25th. The draft is draft is Thursday, and uh, we're... we're excited. I know I, Jason... This, uh, is, this is a stupid show we're doing. Like, look... We're going to talk about quarterbacks, super important, very important for fantasy. You want to listen. I don't want to talk about anything other than the NFL draft. I am in two days from now, the NFL draft is happening, and the only thing I'm seeing in my mind is the draft board and the trade scenarios. I'm like that gif of all the yeah. math equations flying by, except I'm the Zach Galifianakis version. Right, and you're smoking. Yo, for sure. <laughs> um, Ultimate draft week has arrived. <laughs> we are we are there. We've got a big announcement. Uh, we don't have Mike, but we do have this. This week only, we have a very special draft week promotion, the NFL draft, keeping Jason tantalized uh, every moment of the day. I mean, I'm excited too. It's just not. It just doesn't compare to your your level of um, over excitement. I would say, and, and a lot of that probably has to do with Bijan Robinson and. Uh, Zach Charbonnet and some of these rookies, you want to see where they land. For sure. But this week only, you can get entered to win some Ultimate Draft Week prizes that were given away. We do this every year. It's a special event. You can see it up on the screen if you're watching on YouTube, ultimatedraftkit.com. We are giving away a signed DK Metcalf jersey. Ooh. Guaranteed. If you put that on, you can jump up to eight feet into the air. And then Jalen Waddle signed Jalen Waddle jersey as well. And if you put that on, you can run as fast as a car. Thank you. And the big one, the Listener League spot. We're giving another Listener League spot away this week. To enter, you can pre-order the 2023 UDK at ultimatedraftkit.com. You got to do it by this Sunday. And uh, anyone who has ordered any point in the past is automatically entered. So if you've pre-ordered before this week, don't worry about it. You're yeah, in there. You're in. But if you haven't ordered yet, there's never been a better time. And if you want to play in one of the most competitive leagues, one of the most fun leagues with us, with Andy, Mike, and Jason, and uh, have a great time, this is your chance. If you're like, I don't know how to get in the league. I mean, Brooks started his relationship with the Ballers as a listener league contestant. Yeah. And what, what place did you finish in that first season, Brooks? I didn't win. Okay, so not first. Uh, you were a winner in many ways. We're also giving all those prizes away each to separate people. So there'll be three winners, three prizes, signed jerseys, Jalen Waddle, DK Metcalf, and the Listen to the League spot, ultimatedraftkit.com. To enter, we'll be live on Friday with our round one reactions. Uh, you can go to ballerslive.com, follow the show on YouTube, click the bell. We're going to go live around 6 Eastern. One hour before the draft, I believe. So yeah, just... before rounds two and three. Yep. Okay. There you go. There's draft week. Very excited. Uh, anything I'm forgetting there, Brooks? Anything I left out? You got it. All right. That's good. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. 
Well, this was unfortunate. We saw this breaking, I believe, Saturday morning. Jamison Williams, Lions wide receiver, was injured for most of last year. We didn't get to see uh, a player that Jason and I know both going into the draft. Uh, had him right at the tippy top of the mm -hmm. board. So I believe he was my number two. Tons of talent. Suspended for six games now for the 2023 season for violating the NFL's gambling policy. So Jamison Williams won't be there for six weeks. It's a huge blow to... You know, all of the dynasty managers that expected to finally get to see him on the field probably changes a little bit of your draft day perspective on Amon Ross St. Brown. If you need clarity of why he got six games instead of the Calvin Ridley season-long ban, he was not betting on NFL games. He was betting on collegiate games. Which is allowed. But not at the team's facility. Right. You shouldn't be in the NFL stadium or in your facilities betting on anything. Now, if he had gone across the street to his 5G and got off the Wi Fi, oh, you'd never be caught. He would have hey, been Hey, pro fine. tip NFL players, if you're betting from in your facility, get off the Wi Fi. They won't know. <laughs> I, th <laughs> it's, I think probably that's probably true. the truth, right? Yeah. But we're not necessarily in the no, business of no, helping no, them no. escape the gambling policy, I don't think. Yeah, NFL players don't gamble. And so, Jamison Williams is not going to be there. Uh, he's going to be a really weird pick for fantasy players because in redraft leagues, you're going to have a six-game absence. The, that's a huge – I mean, we just dealt with DeAndre Hopkins missing six games for the Cardinals. Jamison Williams is not proven like Hopkins was, and Hopkins was not on a lot of people's boards because – this is the type of thing where you're not on IR. Mm -hmm. So uh, do you think that it's possible he just goes undrafted in some leagues? In some leagues. I, I, you know, someone's going to take a shot at him, and I think most leagues he will be drafted. He won't be drafted by yours truly. He's pretty much off my board. I don't want to wait six weeks for the hope. I mean, he's already a projection. If he was playing the entire season, I like the talent. Um, I, and I would project that he has a good time as uh, a lot of, uh, you know, a good time, high fantasy finishes. But the fact that you're starting, you know, a month and a half into the fantasy season and keep in mind, you gotta, you gotta make playoffs. So it's not, you know, it's, it's not a 17 week fantasy season. <laughs> you're missing too much action to put a player, take up a bench spot. So for me, he is, he's. Not someone I'm going to draft in, in normal redraft leagues. Cowboys exercising the fifth-year option on CeeDee Lamb. It makes sense. Yeah. John Lynch also came out and said that he expects Trey Lance to remain in San Francisco for 2023. Of course he did. I mean, I mean at what's this the, point. What's the alternative? If you don't say, yeah, I think we're probably going to move on, because then the, you're, you're... You're lowering the price. Exactly. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. So... I don't think it's guaranteed he stays there. I, I have heard that the teams that were, have been interested, like it's very cool. The market is cool. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how much the optimism and the the hope and the you know all the talent and potential in the world just disappears when they're not a rookie. Breaking news. We just got word, and we record this show – uh, the afternoon before you're listening oh, to well, it. well, well, well. The Aaron Rodgers trade has happened. Oh, thank goodness. The trade compensation, according to Adam Schefter, the Jets receive Aaron Rodgers, pick number 15, and a 2023 fifth-round pick. The Packers receive pick 13, a second-round pick number 42, a sixth-round pick number 207, and a conditional 2024 second that becomes a first if Rodgers plays 65% of the plays. Wow. So, I mean, a, the deal seems fair. A 2024. First reading. So they got their first rounder, assuming that Rodgers is healthy this season. They got a first rounder for him, moved up two spots in this year's draft, which those, those spots really meant. I mean, you're talking a big difference between – 15 and 13 um, if you're targeting certain players. That feels like a really fantasy football style trade. Oh, like yeah. We've had lots of trades where you, you, people are swapping one or two spots in a draft. So they, they basically just swap that first round, and then they get a two. Uh, and they swap a five for a six, and then they get a second that might become a first. Yeah, and the two is in this year's draft. It's coming up in a couple days here. Wow. Okay, so my reaction is – 
I my reaction is I didn't think one team or the other team got screwed by this deal. I'm surprised that the Packers got that much. I, I don't think either team got screwed here. This is certainly what? fair compensation. But honestly, I thought that I mean, they, it's just one first, maybe. Well, it's a second this year. Yeah, yeah. And a second and, and presumably yeah. a first next year. I guess year. at least two twos. At least two twos and maybe and a two and a one. A two yeah, and a one. okay, okay. So, yeah, no, that's that's. A I lot. figured if you if you were the Jets and you held off past this draft, obviously, then you couldn't trade this this year's draft picks, and then you put the Packers up against the the payment clock of having to pay Rodgers. Yeah, I mean it's um, it's a heck of a trade. I'm curious what our Packer fan thinks of this uh, development. I'm happy with it. Yeah, Al's Al's happy to get him. You're moving on. Yeah. Also. Garrett Wilson. I mean, we knew, but now we know. Yeah. Nothing is, nothing is really changed. Does that go on forever? It seems like it's okay. going to go on endlessly. Yeah, that train is really going. A lot of people on that train. It's a long train for Garrett Wilson. Okay. All right. Um, well, that's cool. Now, hey, hey, hey. That Lam broke during our news segment. Lamar. Lamar, you're next. Get get something done. Sign a contract. Are you speaking directly to Lamar? Yeah, because he's listening. We know that. Um. Yeah, I mean, it's probably going to get done, right? Lamar will probably be back. Yeah, he'll be a Raven. He, he, I, I think even if he has to pl just play out this year on the franchise franchise tag, he'll be a Raven this season. All right. Any other breaking news? Nothing, huh? Uh, have you ordered your Jordan Love jersey, Al? Not yet. It's not on the way. But I'll get one get one ordered now. Okay. You're you're gonna get one ordered now. You're not gonna wait and see if he's any good. Uh correct. Okay. Yeah, just yeah. like you did with Max Hall. Yeah, I got a Max Hall jersey, so I can't blame you there. All right. Uh let's get into the quarterback rankings. Quarterbacks. Before we jump in here, I will say this, Jason. You were kind of I don't know, you were kind of complaining that you don't get to talk all about the draft. Mm -hmm. And I feel like maybe Aaron Rodgers did you a solid and gave you something exciting to kind of talk about here. Certainly. It involved the draft. It there were did. picks. And honestly, the first thing that went through my head was, I might have to adjust. You know, I've, I've got kind of my mock draft, not something I release, but just so that I can kind of project where I've got players going. We've obviously got our prediction show on Thursday where we're going to be saying where we think these players are going to land. I had JSN to the Packers at 15. So I don't know if them moving to 13 will change that in my order. I'm looking forward to seeing. All right, we've been going through the early rankings uh, at every position, and we just wrapped up the <laughs> – Oh, I don't know what to talk about on this show right now. I just <laughs> – All right, Mike's not here, right? Mm-hmm. And Jason, I think, has emphysema. If, you're, if you can't hear I – mean, I just, I, I've wanted to avoid the topic, but yeah, at but some point you just made a sound. That so I was off camera and my mute button was pushed. So I think most people don't know what happened. Right. I really didn't Let have me, to bring this up. No, well, at this point, you know, cat's out of the bag. Let me explain why Andy started laughing <laughs> <laughs> because I tried to kind of mute a cough, both with the mute button, but also like just, you know, one of those. With your mouth. With the mouth closed, but it just ended up doing the fart lips. <laughs> so, that is right. That is so accurate. So I just went. <laughs> yeah, it was like a this really weird sound that I couldn't ignore because it was ridiculous. Yeah, but I'm pushing through. I'm pushing through but for everyone. But it just doesn't, here. to be clear, you were sick like two weeks ago, and this is a Rick. This yeah. is a new permanent thing. Yeah, this is just who, I, smoking. who I am now, and um, I'm really happy with this new voice. Deucers. We're, <laughs> these guys are. They're gone. They're dropping like flies. I need somebody else out here very soon. Uh, into the quarterback rankings we go. Counting it down, the top 10 quarterbacks on our early rankings. I hinted last week during the wide receiver shows where if you want to go back, the early running back wide receiver episodes, um, they took up uh, the last couple of weeks. But I hinted that we had been going through here and putting our rankings in, looking at what our um, – consensus names are and we realize that there's kind of like a have and have nots mm -hmm. is that a fair summation i One, mean it, yes 
there's a group that you're like, okay, they belong in that upper tier. And then there's like a group of like, is this guy, is this guy 16 or, or 28? Is this guy 15 or 25? There is, I, I mean, it's different every single season, but I feel like there's a lot of clarity on this year's quarterback group for fantasy football with the sole exception of incoming rookies and what you believe may, maybe, you know, one of them has an excellent rookie season. I, I'm usually not in on rookie quarterbacks and outside of Justin Herbert, that's worked great. Um, but right now that we're doing a top 10 show and that's just what we were already going to do. But when we started putting these rankings together, <clears throat> there's 10 quarterbacks. I like 10 on the dot. And then I don't want anyone else Past 10 to me, and, and uh, obviously it's it's different for, for everybody, your 10 might not even be the same. But I don't want to play fantasy football with uh, Kirk Cousins and, uh, you know, a, a well, Geno Smith and Jared Goff. Like, I just don't care. And, and again, this is early ranking, so I think there is going to be some, you know, the draft's going to influence things tremendously, especially if a big-name receiver goes someplace. Maybe you take some shots at some deeper – quarterbacks you work yourself into the streaming realm I haven't even thought about yet where Aaron Rodgers in this trade being secured moves him in terms of a streaming quarterback option in New York he's certainly in that conversation I mean I think with the talent he's going to have there in New York with pass catching Brees Hall and Garrett Wilson and Alan Lazard and the tight ends they have like I think I think he's going to be an interesting name for people to throw out there in the right matchup but yeah, I mean, right now, at least, we've kind of isolated a group of guys that kind of seem like they can get it done for you and the others that seem like they might get it done for you, which is tough. Yeah, Aaron Rodgers uh, should at least be in the conversation for being the 11th added to this group. Even though last season he was the quarterback 13 and was very, very bad, obviously he lost Devontae Adams. And the two previous seasons to that, he was the quarterback 6 and the quarterback 3 in 6-point per passing touchdown leagues. Uh, which is our default, and so if you believe Garrett Wilson is able to take that superstar step up to being in the elite Devontae Adams category or at least tier, um, then yeah, maybe Aaron Rodgers can actually be a, a clear top 10 quarterback for fantasy. Yeah, I just uh, – it's going to be interesting breaking down that Jets offense as we get into our ultimate draft kit rankings, the projections over the next month. They come out – I mean, the draft kit's out on June 1st. Yeah. And we are almost into uh, the month after April. Oh, man. What is that going to be? I think. Uh, I think the producers suck. Yeah. That's what I All think. right. Tua. Wow. He's just failing over I there. I mean, goodness okay. gracious. Okay. What, right. what it, wh Al's not listening to the yeah, show. I'm sorry, I was retweeting the the Rogers news and bidding him for. Uh, no, adieu. what about producing the show though? <laughs> I what apologize. About, have yeah. you thought about producing the the podcast? Yeah, because do you know what month it is right now? Because right now it's it's April and it's getting late. Yeah, and pretty soon it's not going to be April anymore. No, it's going to be something different. It's right before June. And take your darn time. <laughs> this is bad. This is awful. I Foot Clan. You I noticed apologize. his excuse was I was tweeting. Yeah, and I was he on was my like, phone. like we were supposed mm -hmm. to think that that was cool. What's it going to be, Owl? It's gonna, <laughs> it's gonna be me. Wow. That was the worst execution of a joke in the history of the fantasy footballers, but we got there. I apologize. That's, That's on me. You bet it's on you. Hey, maybe it'll be a show moment. Number 10 on our early quarterback rankings. Tua Tungavailoa, Miami Dolphins quarterback. Last year, 3,500 yards, 25 touchdowns, eight interceptions. What was incredible from Tua last season with Jalen Waddell and Tyreek Hill was the emergence of the big play passing offense he excelled um he was one of the best in terms of deep ball throwers in the league he had a six touchdown game I mean that was something unfathomable for Tua after his rookie season uh he had three passing touchdowns in three games in a row from weeks eight through ten and you were always I mean I had Tua in our league of record as my locked in starter for for part of the year and he could have a bad game and it would change in two throws of the football. Like it wasn't dink dunk down the field and then oh maybe I'll save one. It's like the old Philip Rivers mm -hmm. years where it was like, oh man, we got an, we need a whole drive to come together. No, it's just you just need Tyreek or Waddle. 
Yeah, when you have those two guys, you're. This is why I prefer someone like Tua, um, you know, over a Kirk Cousins. Obviously, he's got Justin Jefferson, but Kirk Cousins is solid. But he he's not going to have many games where you go out there and throw for four hundred yards and three touchdowns. Something outrageous, uh, a week winning performance for fantasy. But that will happen and has happened with Tua. The issue with Tua is really just health and whether or not you know you're worried about the concussion issue. But we can't. We can't predict that. We've got to go with what the medical personnel is telling Tua. And so he's playing ball, and I'm going to be willing to draft him. I think he'll be a value because I, I don't believe anybody is clamoring over themselves to get him. At the end, he, he kind of had two different stretches. He had the stretch where he dominated. was four weeks in a row. The quarterback won. Three weeks in a row was a top five quarterback, one of those the number one overall. And then he went on by, came back. And was a little bit more mediocre. But the fact that you can see those ceiling outcomes and you have wide receivers that can take you there no matter what the game script is, I, I like the I like swinging for the fences with the, the upside opportunity of Tua. And we talked about this with Waddle and this offense. Like They were figured out a little bit. I mean, after, after week 11, um, that interior passing game was figured out. Tua did not get above quarterback 13 from the bye week on before he went out with another concussion. So... Uh, the, the the fact that, you know, do you trust McDaniel to kind of figure things out? Yeah, I do. Um, you know, the I, I talked to uh, Kyle Juszczyk. Kyle Juszczyk believes in him. Obviously, he was uh, um, his offensive coordinator back in San Francisco. There, every player that you talk to that's worked with him says he's a genius. And we saw stretches of, of brilliance. So, at the very least, even if they get figured out again halfway through the season, you would assume they're going to start pretty hot. Dak Prescott comes in at number nine, and uh, we're adding the upside meter to the draft kit rankings where we're looking at players' potential to outperform their draft position and their projections. I'm very curious of how you look at Dak Prescott at this stage in his career because um, he's got a solid track record for fantasy football. He's dealt with injuries. He made CeeDee Lamb a star last year, but didn't have help elsewhere. I, I think He part, finished at 18. Yeah, part of why CeeDee Lamb was a star is because there was no help elsewhere. Everything went to CeeDee Lamb. His you know, target percentage, his just market share of this offense was incredible. Now you have some other weapons coming to town. Brandon Cooks is added, but you lose Kellen Moore. You lose the offensive system that passed so much, and they want to run the ball more. So the upside meter for Dak to me is not extraordinarily high for someone that is turning more into a pocket passer. His Once he got back from injury, his 17-game pace was about 260 rushing yards. <laughs> yeah, and, and his, uh, you know, I, I agree with you completely. I had him, I'm starting to work a little bit on these projections at the quarterback position, but I, I, I see him as like a 5 or a 6 out of 10 on the upside. He's a stable fantasy producer that probably does not have the kind of high-end potential that several other, the Jalen Hurts and of the world have, but is also probably not, you know, you just said it with Tua. I don't think people are fighting over Dak anymore. Mm -mm. And so from a value perspective, if we're going from the unknown streaming candidate late in drafts, I think maybe we're going towards um, these back of your top 10 projected rankings being a potential value where you can delay that quarterback pick and still get consistency. Yeah, you're, you're going to need Dak to get back to his rushing touchdowns, which you could argue without Zeke there when they're near the goal line. You know, uh, he had the mark of the beast to start his career, six rushing touchdowns a year. And, um, you know, if, if that goes up at the goal line without Zeke, then that's just a bonus for fantasy. Yeah, he missed uh, four weeks right after the start of the season last year. He got eviscerated a little bit for the playoff interceptions and the in the issues in the passing game where maybe they were more dependent on him and now they want to run the football 74 percent completion rate in wins just 55 oh. in losses and uh, like you said the rushing touchdowns have gone down every year and um it's going to be an offensive coordinator change but we all have him at nine let's take a quick break come back with our number eight quarterback
Coming in at number eight right now, a player that I know you have tremendous confidence in, Jason. I am I am close. I am not all the way there. But Trevor Lawrence, 23 years old, last year, very impressive towards the end of the season, the playoff matchup. Uh, quarterback seven in best ball, eight on our ranks, and finally looks like a franchise quarterback. Yeah, I mean, and, and really, it didn't take long. That's his sophomore season he was the quarterback eight last year in his second season and one could argue it is is really his first season of opportunity without urban meyer ruining that entire franchise for a year most people need a whole detox year after urban meyer before breaking the new getting back to neutral yeah and so for trevor lawrence to come through be the quarterback eight last year add calvin ridley be in the same system for a second year, but going into his third in the NFL, I do not believe that Trevor Lawrence takes a step back. And I'm pretty confident he takes a large step forward. Well, part of that confidence would come from the emergence of Evan Ingram over the back half of the year. They're looking at a long-term deal, but he's back on a franchise tag. Calvin Ridley, back from suspension. Uh, you know, Calvin Ridley is not a player we got to talk about in that wide receiver countdown, but if he's back to being the Calvin Ridley or close to it that we knew, we need to, as a fantasy community, not forget how talented he is. And then Christian Kirk emerged. Zay Jones is involved. They have Travis Etienne in the backfield. They're the uh, favorites, I believe, right, to win the division. So Tr Doug Peterson works great with young quarterbacks. There's a lot to like about the Jacksonville situation, a lot of positives. Jump from that quarterback 22 as a rookie to quarterback eight last year. And, um, you know, he could be one of those guys that you're just waiting and waiting and waiting in drafts to take a quarterback because you want Trevor Lawrence and you know, you know, the Lamar Jacksons and Justin Fields and those guys are going to go ahead of him. So yeah. I think it's a huge opportunity there. If Calvin Ridley is a true bona fide, I would say like, you know, bringing to the offense a little bit of the Tyreek aspect of, hey, you can make a big play with Calvin Ridley that maybe you weren't making with a Zay Jones. You could, you could see him getting into the top six, top five. Yeah, I mean, it, it's always tough, and we're going to bring this up a lot as we talk about the rest of the quarterbacks here, but when you're speaking of quarterbacks that don't ha have a very high rushing baseline, they've got to be excellent. They've got to be 30-plus touchdowns and 4,500 passing yards. I believe that that is in Trevor Lawrence's wheelhouse here. I think he'll do that this season, but they also started using him in the running game a bit more. Uh, the first month of the season – which was their first, obviously, in this system. They didn't really use him in the running game. After that point, his final 13 games, he was on a 17-game pace of about 350 rushing yards. So it was just nice to know that there is a little bit of a baseline there. Um, Justin Herbert at seven. Justin Herbert, I think, has a huge opportunity for a bounce-back season. He's 25 years old, battled through injuries, played through injuries. What happened last year, he didn't throw enough touchdowns. I mean, that was the truth of Justin Herbert's season. He, he passed for a ton of yards, approached the 5,000-yard mark despite being dealing with the injuries, just 25 touchdowns, which was a step down from the breakout number two overall campaign where he threw 38 of them in 2021. Uh, last year was unequivocally a disappointment because of on a production front for Justin Herbert. Didn't have Keenan Allen for a ton of the year. Uh, Big Mike Williams was inconsistent. Lost Jalen Guyton. Um, it it was just one of those years, I would say, with with this team. And look, they're going to invest in a, in a wide receiver in this draft. And I don't know which one it's going to be. Jordan Addison. Jason does. Jason's yeah. seen the future, and it's Jordan Addison. But um, I think it will be one of the bigger name wide receivers. I think they're going to fix that up. Keenan Allen coming into the year healthy. Mike Williams still there in an offense that knows what it has in Justin Herbert. So I've got him at five. Jason and Mike have him at seven. Comes in at seven in our consensus, but I do think that uh, it's going to be a, a, a not a full rebound to that maybe game breaking QB two overall year, but we know the ceiling of Justin Herbert, and it's it's the finish in the top three. Yeah, for sure. I mean, his, his talent is unquestioned. He's going to be one of the very few quarterbacks that could throw for nearly five thousand yards. It's just a matter of do the passing touchdowns go? And this is where and we talked about this last year with where he was at ADP the risk of guys that don't run. If you don't have 35 passing touchdowns, you're going to be a disappointment if you have to pay up 
for that quarterback. Now, thankfully, Justin Herbert will fall a little bit this season, and I don't think you're going to have to pay up. Last year, you were drafting him as the quarterback two, quarterback three, right near the top. And so I'm I'm okay with where he's being drafted right now, and certainly his talent, we've seen him as the quarterback two. But he, he didn't rush for 150 yards last year. So the rushing baseline, not there with well, him. Well, look, I think that one thing I, I've been thinking about this in Dynasty, see if you agree with me. But I might just start taking the lower-ranked Herbert or Burrow every year. Sure. Because I think those two guys are much more similar than people think. Uh, I know that the weapons are a little bit better for Burrow. Herbert, in a dynasty league, does not get nearly the respect Burrow gets right now. And Herbert's younger. He's And he's proven it with these with a huge season. So I think when you're a pocket passer, Burrow's going to have a couple years where he's in the 20s at in the touchdowns. He just is. Yeah, I think that's true. Again, there's the difference here. You know, Burrow had five rushing touchdowns, 257 rushing yards. Not a massive uh, rusher, but he's a little bit more mobile. And and I don't understand why they don't use Justin no, they, Herbert. They, they did, though. Last year was specific. I mean, he was over 300 yards the year before. He's capable of doing that. Yeah, they eight. need to get back to it. Well, my point is last year was an anomaly because he hurt himself. He was broken during the year. So you saw a, a, a massive diminishment because of the injury. You remember him getting pummeled in the – it was a rib injury, right? And he's mm -hmm. wearing a flak jacket, and you're not going to leave him susceptible to the hits, and he's not going to be willing to take off. That I think they will get back to it, is my, I guess my point. Yeah, I mean, uh, look, that's that's fair. I, I don't know because of that injury if they really want to get back to it just because he's healthy. I think they want to avoid those injuries. So I don't think they'll get back to the rushing game. But once he healed up from that, if you just look at the last eight games, he was – much better he was on pace for 4,800 yards um and and played some good ball had most of his games where he was a quarterback one Lamar Jackson comes in at six we're assuming he's a Raven for these rankings Jason's got him at four Mike at six I've got him at seven um Lamar Jackson's story is a complicated tale uh because you have these the, this history with the MVP season uh, he basically broke fantasy football for a year. And, you know, you know what he's capable of, and that's always in the back of your mind. But you need to also recognize 2023 will be four seasons removed from that number one overall finish. He hasn't completed a season in, inside. Uh, you know, he's he was 10 in 2020. But, you know, 15 the year after playing 12 games, 14 last year playing 12 games. It's been a minute. 36 it, touchdowns that year through the year, 26, 16, and 17 the next three years. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it has been a minute. And I, you know, obviously after that year, he was the quarterback one drafted, and he's not there anymore. So, you know, I think the fantasy community has adjusted. But if you take away his injured game where he played like 14% of the snaps and you look at the 11 games he played up to that point, I mean, he was on pace for 1,100 rushing yards. He, he I mean, when you can rush – for over a thousand yards, you are going to be great for fantasy. He was pretty solid. the The upside we know is there, and he lost Hollywood Brown, and he lost Rashad Bateman. He was throwing to nobodies, and Mark Andrews was banged up. So if Andrews is healthy, you add Odell Beckham. We know that you know all the rumors are they're taking a first round wide receiver. We'll know in a couple of days, but I think the situation around him is going to be better from a receiver standpoint it can't be much worse than what it was last year and and the trouble was you know these this run of games of one touchdown or no touchdowns you know one 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 zero two one zero one zero it's not you're not gonna be very happy regardless of the rushing if you got a quarterback on a 13 touchdown pace which is what he was doing so you got to fix that if the offense can do anything you know if they sign a long-term deal with Lamar Jackson your next objective is to do whatever you can to make him better. So you got to hope they can do that and that he can succeed in that. Um, and and because he's going to have to make that transition at some point. Of, you know, he's not going to be able to run for 1,200, 1,300 yards a year. He is not going to be able to do that forever, but he will be able to do that as a 26-year-old, which is the age he'll play this year. Justin Fields is 24, and he comes in at number five ahead of Lamar Jackson. Mike at four, Jason at five, me at six. I mean – he was, uh, I like this phrasing here, a wrecking ball for fantasy. Yeah. Um, from week six on, when they, they unlocked him. It was, it, it was the dream for fantasy players where a team finally just adjusts the offense 
and does whatever they can do to make a player better. Um, that's what happened. So he, he went up to 5.3 designed runs per game. The first six weeks, he was about two design runs a game. The difference in those three runs a game, it was game-breaking speed on display. Um, there aren't. It, it's not like there aren't concerns with Justin Fields, and this is one of the areas where fantasy and, and reality, I think, d- kind of divert a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Because Justin Fields, the fantasy player, is elite. And Justin Fields, the NFL player, is on his way, I would say. He's on his way, but he took too many sacks, too many turnovers, too many mistakes, none of which mattered for fantasy. Yeah, I'm not I'm not even as bullish that he will ever develop into a great NFL quarterback. But you're right. For fantasy, he is he's absolutely elite. He had ten games from that week six on until he was injured near the end of the season. And in that stretch one week where he wasn't a quarterback one. He had weeks of the quarterback five, the quarterback five, the quarterback five, three different times. The quarterback won two different times. He was absolutely on fire. What we've seen with these mobile quarterbacks is that their passing weapons still really matter. It doesn't take away from their rushing volume. But when you can have a rusher who has weapons to throw the ball to, you know, you, you add – A.J. Brown and Devonta Smith for Jalen Hurts, it's great. You add Stephon Diggs for Josh Allen, it's great. D.J. Moore isn't in that level, but he's easily far and away their best wide receiver, and they added him to the group. You you add Darnell Mooney back because he was also injured. So let me ask you And you put him where he should be. He should be the wide receiver, too, on a team. Where was Jalen Hurts drafted last year? What was his ADP? He was in the sixth round, I believe. Sixth. Okay, you probably not going to get Justin Fields in the sixth. You aren't going to get Justin Fields in the sixth. What last year taught the fantasy community is that these mobile rushing quarterbacks are too valuable. Uh, I've been seeing Justin Fields usually go in like the third round. It's it, it's tough, but he's, he is usually... He's the quarterback four in best ball as well, so he's a little bit higher than where we have him ranked. So people are going for what they would view as the league winning mm-hmm. option. Best ball might be tailored a little bit more that direction, Whereas I think I, I'll see Lamar go ahead of once he gets a contract, Lamar is going to go ahead of Fields in lots of leagues. Yeah, I, I believe that that Justin Fields will be the last drafted super high potential dual threat quarterback available. <laughs> you know, it, what I, is that again? The last uh, drafted of the super high potential dual threat quarterbacks. Yeah, that classic. Uh, we'll figure the. Yeah. Was it the working on anagram the, out for that working one? Working on the title there. Uh, Joe Burrow at four. Joe Burrow was the quarterback uh, for last year. 26 years old. I got him at three. Ooh. Yeah, a little spicy. Jason at six, Mike at five. I guess I pushed him up in our rankings. 4,400 yards, 35 touchdowns, 12 interceptions. Only quarterback last year to finish number one overall three times during the year. Uh, Did it in back-to-back weeks. Did it without Jamar Chase for part of the year last year. So he's an elite talent. They have uh, a great offense, great wide receivers. We'll see what their quarterback or their running back room looks like after the draft, but I don't really care that much. Yeah, I mean, they've had a good running back. 606 passing attempts. uh, He was outstanding. He finished last season as the quarterback four. Remember, he didn't play week 17. Yeah. (laughs) So... I mean, he was absolutely outstanding. If you want to talk about a weak winning uh, type of guy, you, you you brought it up. Three number one finishes. He had a number five, a number six, a number two, a number six, a number three. You're talking about those weeks where you just got to win because you had Burrow. He can do that. The issue with if Burrow is being drafted this high, if he is costing you a ton, is what we saw last year with Herbert. It's just you have to... You have to be north of 35 passing touchdowns. Yeah, you hope that he's um, he's got very high odds of that when you have the talent he has, but it's still difficult to predict how that how that goes. And um, whereas the rushing volume of some of the guys that we're about to talk about, it's guaranteed. It doesn't matter if your defense has a nice day; uh, it's just baked in. Uh, I have wondered. And I don't even like talking about it, but I've wondered about maybe, you know, we've talked in dynasty leagues 
I like to cash in on the quarter or the running back right at the right time, the way I did with Todd Gurley, and we've discussed, you know, going and getting that younger guy you believe in. Mm-hmm. I've wondered if this is the opportunity to take a Josh Allen in a dynasty league and go get Joe Burrow and. Sure, absolutely. Um, and I, I've kind of played around with that a little bit because, you know, I don't think maybe a little bit because of the rumors of Josh Allen maybe not running as much as he's run in the past. You know, it's easy to say that, but when you need when you need it, it's there. And I don't think it happens right away, but I've thought a little bit about, you know, if somebody really likes Josh Allen – and I can get Joe Burrow. I think he's just – who has a more stable situation well, at Joe, the quarterback position? Joe Burrow has endless <clears throat> stability and longevity. There is a shelf life with these mobile rushing quarterbacks that we've seen, even the best of the best, the most dominating, Cam Newton. You know, Cam Newton's not that old right now <laughs> by, by quarterback age standards, but he's been done for three years because he was a mobile rushing quarterback. Joe Burrow will have a much longer shelf life in dynasty – than Josh Allen will, but Josh Allen's peak right now is more guaranteed and going to be higher. That's um, an interesting debate. Yeah, I mean, on I, what you'd want to, because you're not gonna. I mean, if you try to make that trade when when the transition's happening, it's not. That's not the time to do it. No, you have to do it right now. Well, you know, it, my startup dynasty rankings, I I have Josh Allen ahead of Joe Burrow. So oh, I I did look at that. I did see that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I might have been looking on, <laughs> uh, uh, on purpose there. Yeah, to uh, to speak to the the passing touchdowns from pocket passers, uh, I pulled up Aaron Rodgers. I was just curious what his, you know, because he's a touchdown throwing machine. And you just look at his years back and forth, and it's like 38 touchdowns. Great. The next year, 31. That's going to be disappointing if you draft him high. The next year, 40. The next year he was injured, but then it was 25, 26, then 48. Touchdowns are not a sticky stat as much as, other stats, so you got to be careful with the pocket passers. Yeah, yeah, I agree. You, you, you might be right that the right approach is take Herbert or Burrow, whichever one this year is lower. Yeah, because because I mean, you're drafting the same player. You're drafting the same player or close to it with the same amount of touchdown ability, and so whoever threw fewer touchdowns last year is probably who you should draft this year. Uh. Let me give you the last three names, and then we'll talk about them all together. It's the upper echelon here. Jalen Hurts at three, and then I didn't realize this until this moment, but apparently Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes were tied at one. Is that accurate? Yes, sir. Um, it's because... It's because Jason has Patrick Mahomes at three. Yes. The disrespect. That's whatever. It's fine. Um, because It's almost the same thing you're talking about. Now, Patrick Mahomes is ridiculous. I mean, he threw for over 5200 yards at 41 touchdowns. Yeah, he don't count as a pocket pass. So, there's another there's another tier there where you're willing to, you know, eh, we don't need to run the ball in the red zone ever. We'll no. just have Patrick Mahomes do it. Um all three of these players uh absolutely elite. Jalen Hurts last year finished at quarterback 3. I mean, these these are in order here. Quarterback 3 for Hurts, quarterback 2 for Allen, quarterback 1 for Mahomes last year. Uh you know, the best of the best. Jalen Hurts secured a new bag. Brand new, fresh bag of cash. The actual fabric was woven out of gold. Can they do? They wo They weave gold. They now. weave gold. That's new, huh? Yeah. Rumpelstiltskin figured that one out. Huh. Okay. All right. Uh, what's... Th give me... Give me a reason why you can make a mistake with any of these three. Because What's the mistake you could make? The mistake you could make is drafting them too high. Um, first round. First round is too high. It, it's a matter of opportunity cost. What type of running back or wide receiver are you sacrificing to draft the quarterback? That's, that's all it is. Because outside of injury, which is unpredictable, you know that these three guys are going to be weekly dominators for fantasy. I would prefer, obviously I've got Mahomes third. He finished first last year. I would prefer the guys that have the rushing baseline of six, north of 500, 600 rushing yards. So last he's year, behind Hurts and, and uh, Allen for you. Exactly. Now, last year, Mahomes actually ran for north of 350, four rushing touchdowns. So he did add a little bit of that to his game. But you Breaking news. That was a little rude, but, oh, I, no, I, but I there are certain it. players I break in with, and it's, you know. Is it Lamar? It's a little bit of a tease. Oh, no. 
But Brees Hall did <gasps> he did tweet. Oh, oh, we're breaking news for tweets now. Okay. Yes. And he said, quote, my knee feel a little healthier now. <laughs> what? Oh, Breeze, you guys, you gotta, you gotta just double check that tweet, my man. So read, read that what, again. What are your thoughts? My knee and knee is capitalized for some reason. Well, it's 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 uh, a it's a, a proper name. Yeah, it's a proper yeah. knee. Uh, my knee feel a little healthier now. Okay. Okay. Well, I mean, I guess that's better. That must than... be related to Mister Rogers being yeah, there. Yeah. So. I just want you to know his knee is encouraged by the Rogers news. Well, that's great. Uh, Rogers, go give him like a you know a thigh massage. Get the get you know stretch out those muscles and let his knee perform at. He its also best. changed his profile picture to a picture of Aaron Rodgers. Oh, nice! So Brees Hall is feeling really good. When you've been with Zach Wilson, yeah, the world beyond Zach Wilson must feel. Like you've like you've gotten out of um, like a Hell. dungeon cell. I mean, like the the fact that Zach Wilson's teammates, who are still his teammates, are changing their profile pictures and being like, "Hallelujah!" I mean, obviously that, that's fair. Uh, you know, first ballot Hall of Famer, but they have no, they do not care whatsoever about Zach Wilson's feelings. They're like, yeah, they're done with him. Very, I mean, New York will be a fun story all year long. Lover, hater, and Rogers is fun. It is super fun. I'm, I'm thrilled for fantasy purposes to see what Brees Hall and Garrett Wilson and these weapons that they have can do. I don't agree with the, um, you know, the 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 media that's like, oh, they're a Super Bowl contender now. I realize they had a very difficult schedule last year, and their schedule is way easier if you look at. Um, you know, Vegas projected wins and, and the, the, you know, the actual schedule and how Super it lines Bowl up. Super Bowl contender is... That division is a brutal. I think Miami is going to take a step forward with the acquisitions they've made on the defensive side. Yeah, I mean, they're good. Buffalo is as yeah elite as any team in the NFL. Six games again, and then New England, and New England yeah. always fights no matter what. Yeah, New mean, England might be right at the at the bottom of that division. Aaron Rodgers didn't get the Packers to the playoffs in a weak NFC. So I don't think he's just this cure all, but but the Jets it, it defense could happen is, though. Jets defense is they elite. They could win could the happen. division. They could win the division. They could win the division. Yes, I, just, I don't I, believe I they will. It's going to be a lot of fun. And you got what? You got three wild cards now, right? And their win totals at nine and a half, so they're kind of projected to hit the playoffs. Mm. There's barely though. Is that, that, is, that barely. is that an updated line? That's what it, they they laid that line before the news. They knew they knew that Aaron was on a plane. Okay, here we go. It is. It is. Our, I mean, Brett Favre going from Green Bay to New York, and then Aaron Rodgers going from Green Bay to New York. That's something special. Just unbelievable. Get ready, Vikings fans. Aaron Rodgers coming your way soon. So Hurts, Allen, Mahomes. Look, there's not a ton to talk about at the top. We know how good these guys are. We kind of discussed some of Allen's future in the in the Burrow discussion. Jalen Hurts. You know, does he have another year in store with 13 rushing touchdowns? I don't know. That, that's a fair question. 13 rushing t touchdowns is a ton. You talk about predictability. That's one of those areas. I mean, if if Jalen Hurts has eight, that's a great season on the ground, and it's still not 13. So, you know, he only threw 22 passing touchdowns. So I could it's see hard, some It's hard areas. to throw as many passing touchdowns when you're rushing for 13. I think if his rushing touchdowns go down, it's going to be – you know, propped up by his passing touchdowns going well, up. Well, you, you could have some more success in the running game outside of Jalen Hurts as well. That's true. You're For not, all we you, know, they have Bijan. You're not <laughs> – good. I mean, you, he had 43 red zone carries. It's the most of all time. So when you hit most of all time numbers, those are areas that can 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 ebb and flow from season to season. I, sure. would, I would agree with you, but the one place where it is sticky, extremely sticky, is when they have one yard to go. So if they're on the one-yard line, every human in the world that follows football knows the play that's going to run, and they are at a 90% hit rate with that play because when you push from behind a quarterback who can squat umpteen kajillion pounds, they cannot stop that one-yard rug rugby scrum pile forward. And so it's just a guarantee. Like, you're on the one, he gets a rushing touchdown. 
right? I mean, about 90% of the time, that's going to be true. So I do think that that is a little bit more predictive. Remember, Jalen Hurts was far and away the quarterback one. He, he ended up uh, getting injured, missed uh, week 16, 17. Um, but up until that point, he was ahead of Mahomes, ahead of Josh Allen in a, in a per-game basis. The ultimate draft week. One more reminder here, chance to win some big prizes, sign Jalen Waddle jersey, sign DK Metcalf jersey, and a listener league spot. And uh, you just have to go to ultimatedraftkit.com, pick up your UDK. It releases in about a month, and uh, you're going to get it at the lowest possible price. We're adding some new features this year, the UDK Plus. The UDK Plus has a ton of content that's out right now, all the Dynasty information. We've got so much coming right after the draft, so – you know, if you want to see how that changes, dynasty rankings, rookie rankings, rookie recaps and reviews, all sorts of stuff, a new mock draft, everything is going to be in the UDK Plus at ultimatedraftkit.com. That'll do it for today's show. Thanks for tuning in. We'll have Mike back for the next episode. We'll take Jason's cigarettes away, and then we'll be never. We'll be back with some draft predictions. Don't miss it. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.